All right, young entrepreneurs and their families, welcome to the My First Sale podcast today. We have one of our heroes on our hero's journey. His name is Jamie Matthews. He is a uh, real estate guru. Uh, he, is, um, he owns several businesses. He's an incredibly generous individual. He's a family man. He, is, uh, he has a company called Explore Austin, an organization. They help kids all over. Uh, they take them on trips and mentor them. They also have a pond hockey club. Is an amazing hockey rink locally in Austin, Texas, where they live. Um, he is just, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's a master teacher. He's one of uh, Travis and my mentors. Um, and his name, again, is Jamie Matthews. So, Jamie Matthews, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, All right. You ready for some pepper questions for, these, for the kids listening right now? Are you ready for this? I'm as ready as I'm going to be. All right. Fire these off when I ask you. Number one, favorite ice cream? Mint chocolate chip. All right. Favorite superhero? Batman. Batman, okay. He can be categorized as a superhero, but Batman. He counts, don't worry. Kids listening, he counts. Uh, all right, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, invisibility. You wish you could be invisible, awesome, yeah. okay. And then last one, what's your favorite movie of all time? Braveheart. Braveheart, me too. That's, yes. That's it. Any come from behind? I love, a, I love a movie where there's an underdog. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, well, thanks for being on the podcast today. We've got tons of listeners, young entrepreneur rock stars all over the world listening in. And Jamie, we wanna hear just a little bit about you and how you started out. Um, in business, some of your earliest memories, your earliest jobs or businesses, what was it? What, what comes to mind? Well, the first memory that comes to mind um, that I would consider somewhat entrepreneurial was one summer when I was a teenager, I got together with some of my buddies and we mowed lawns to make money. Um, and we were not old enough to drive, but one of our buddies was, and he would pick us up in the morning. We would all jump into the back of his pickup truck and we would drive around the neighborhoods in Austin looking for yards that looked like they needed, you know, cutting or some help, you know, cleaning them up. Mm -hmm. And we would literally jump out of the truck and one of us would walk up to the front door and knock on it. This is way before cell phones and every, you know, all the other technology we have now. And we would knock on the door and if somebody was nice enough to answer, we would ask them if they had any interest in having their, you know, their grass cut and their leaves cleaned up. I love that. I love it. How many of you were there? Well, most of the days it was three of us. Uh, it was a guy named Todd and one of my other buddies named Randall. Um, Todd was the guy that could drive. He actually had the equipment also. Um, so that, that helped. Um, awesome. and, and, you know, it just kind of, it just kind of went from there. Um, one of my, some of my favorite parts about that job though, um, I was hanging out with my friends, you know, all day. And if you ask me today, hey, do you want to go out and mow yards all day in the summer in Austin, Texas? My first inclination would be to say, no, that's crazy. I don't, I don't really feel like doing that today. Um, but when I think back on that, the, the two things I, that come to my mind about, or at least that really helped me on my journey was, the first thing was, whatever y'all end up doing, it's got to be fun. And what I mean by fun is, it's fun, ha, ha, ha. It's fun, like it's scary, like um, it's challenging. Um, and it's sharing, sharing with teammates. It's uh, spending time with friends. Uh, the relationships are a big part of that. Um, and then the other, the other big takeaway from that job was, at some point, you're going to have to knock on somebody's door. Um, yep. You know, just like when we're all learning how to swim, at some point, you have to step off the diving board or you have to step off the edge and swim to the other side and realize you're going to be okay. Um, we all reach that point at a different time. But at some, at some point, you're going to have to look inside and say, listen, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And... It's, it's okay if I fail. It's okay if they say no. Um, yeah. You know, but if you don't take that first step or knock on that first door, you're never going to get a yes. 
Yep. Yeah, that's really good. That's a great point, Jamie, just because I know we've I've talked, Scott's talked a lot with some of our My First Sale entrepreneurs, and uh, it can be difficult sometimes, if especially if I'm like an introverted kid, and just to ask, yeah, pick up the phone and call, call grandma, call my uncle or aunt and just say, hey, would you like to buy a t-shirt, right? And so it for, for you kid entrepreneurs out there, just remember that, just, um, it's going to be scary, like Jamie's saying, um, and you are going to get no's, but failure is a great, that's how we learn, right? Yeah. Get, get some practice with success and failure with your inner circles. Um, and for me, that could have been going to my neighbor's yard, who I already know, and they already know me, and then kind of going out from there. Yeah. Yep. And that's how you can actually build confidence. Every good entrepreneur has been told no a million times. It's okay to be told no because not every single person has to be your customer. You only need to have customers who love what you have to give them, and that's what makes a win-win. That's how the economy grows. That's how people get helped, right? Yeah. So, a, lot of, a lot of those no's can give you clues on how to make your product or your service better or more appealing. I love that. Yeah. So one of the things that we help kids do is if somebody doesn't want something or they don't have a good experience to ask for feedback, ask them, you know, what could make this better? What could I change to serve you or somebody else in the future better? Because I love what I do and I want so many people to enjoy it. And people will be, people are actually honest with you if you ask them because they want you to succeed. So that's really, really good advice, Jamie. Thank you for that. Yep. What I have a follow up though. How do you deal with scary things? Sometimes not very well. Um, well, you, you've mentioned confidence, it, and confidence comes from knowing that you've done the work. Um, so I, I usually have to stop and think about that. Um, you know what I do? I take a deep breath. Ooh, that's when really I something scary. I take a deep breath and that wow. sounds silly. Um, I don't know how many of you are scientists out there, but from what I understand, there's something magical that happens in your brain and your, your nervous system. When you stop and take a breath, when you're in what they call the fight or flight situation, mm -hmm. you free up more of your brain's capacity to, to actually think logically. Um, I don't want to bore y'all with a bunch of science stuff, but like, no, stop perfect. and take a deep breath. Yeah. I love that because, you know, this, this whole idea, and this is what kids need to hear. This is what I wished I knew as a kid, Jamie. Mm -hmm. If I, instead of in the moment, if I, instead of reacting and getting really mad or getting really frustrated or getting really sad or just walking away from something or chucking it or breaking it or fighting with my sister, if I could just take a step and take a deep breath count to four, and then breathe out, you can actually get yourself mentally to train yourself to respond to a situation instead of react to a situation, right? Yeah, and when you get to that stage where you're not being reactive, you're freed up to actually ask yourself the question, what's the worst that could happen? Yep. And when you start thinking about that, then you can start coming up with uh, solutions for, well, how do I prevent the worst from happening is the worst that could happen? Is that really so bad? Have I been through that already? Mm. And, I'm, and I'm okay today. Um, and it really uh, takes away the power of the fear when, you, when you're able to do that. So does it get easier as you get older or is it just get hard, like more things that might be harder to deal with? It gets easier as you get older because you have more experience dealing with fear it gets harder when you get old like me because you get old and stubborn and set in your ways and young kids can deal with it best because young kids, you're used to taking risks all the time. You just don't realize it. Like you're doing scary things all the time. Like you're climbing trees, you're jumping your bikes off curbs. Um, you're fighting with your brothers and sisters, like mm -hmm. actually like real fights. Like that's a scary thing. Um, so draw on your experiences and think about what are the other things I'm actually doing that are actually kind of scary. Or one of my friends has told me 
I'm actually afraid of that. Or you've had to tell your friend, you know, not everybody's uh, excited to hold a snake. Well, some kids love to hold snakes. Well, reach out to those people and how they deal with their fear. Yep. That's great. I'm terrified of snakes, by the way. Me too. I don't like snakes. I don't want them anywhere near me. I'll, I'd, rather, I'd rather swim with a shark than have the snake by me. And I don't like sharks either. <laughs> if there's somebody out there, like the crocodile hunter, who loves snakes. And, you, and sometimes we have to bring those people into our business to do the things that either we're not capable of or, you know what, we're too scared. And that it's okay to admit you're too scared and get help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about that. So I want to know, um, here's just a really simple question for kids to teach them about what you do. So if you could explain this to a, a young entrepreneur, what you do, what do you do? Well, when it, when it comes to small real estate projects, what we do is we take sad looking houses and make them happy looking and pray that somebody will pay us to do that. That's what we do. <laughs> now, um, you just explained the entire real estate industry in one sentence that a four-year-old yeah. could understand. <laughs> yeah. That is brilliant. Well done, well, Jake Matthews. Thanks. <laughs> I, I hope it works out that simply for me uh, the rest of the way. <laughs> Um, and then, you know what, that's actually what we do. Well, that's, that's what we did at Explore Austin. And that's what we do at the Pond Hockey Club is somebody walks in the doors at the Pond Hockey Club. They get to go play hockey and have fun with their friends. And they get to exercise. Um, and when they leave, they've got a little bit better, a little bit uh, more of a smile on their face. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we're delivering. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. that's cool that is cool so what is what would you say was the best lesson you learned growing up to prepare you for all of the things that you're doing now making sad houses happy and making people smile at the pond hockey rink and with explore austin mentoring kids what was the most important thing that you think that you learned getting to that stage well right away is um partner with really smart people. Now it could be your brother, it could be your sister, it could be your mom, your dad, you know, somebody that you know and trust that can give you some guidance um, because you will not have it all figured out. When you start your business, you will not have it all figured out after you've sold your first product and you will not, you will never have it all figured out. Um, like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, and a lot of people that are attracted to entrepreneurship and running their own business are typically, um, pretty wound up, pretty high achievers, pretty used to doing things their own way, usually kind of stubborn and they do it because they don't want to work for somebody else. And that's not a good reason to start a business, but you got to be aware of your own personality and how that can get in the way and be brave enough to ask for help. Um, That's brilliant. I, by the way, that is the main reason for my first sale because we've talked to thousands of kid entrepreneurs now and helped them launch their businesses. And yes, they love the training, they have the videos that we give them, they love the online safe environment to sell their products. But the number one thing we hear, Jamie, is they wanna try it. They want mentors, they want coaching and other kids even to tell them best practices or ideas or just encourage them to keep going. So that's, that is a huge lesson that I feel, the, I feel the same way when you said that, that I think the mentors in my life have brought me to this point and the asking for help and getting help, help from really smart people brought me to this point. Yeah, and just know, knowing that it's there, um, it's real easy right out of the gates to get intimidated by Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff I've got to do. Mm -hmm. I look at the steps on my first sale and all the stuff that y'all help with, with, you know, getting the, the web page set up, you know, all the banking systems set up, all of that stuff is actually very intimidating to me as well. And I don't know what I'm doing. 
in that regard. But if I'm willing to just reach out and get help, some of that's already taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is cool. So yes, mentorship, asking for help. Kids, you heard it here first. This is where you need to go to be a successful entrepreneur. So Jamie, if you could get, here's the last question, okay? okay. Last big one for these kiddos. If you could get into a time machine and go back to kid Jamie, what would you do right when you got out of that time machine? Maybe you'd go buy a stock. Maybe, you, I don't know. But what would you do first? And what would you tell Jamie, kid Jamie? Oh, boy. Take a second, because that's a good yeah. question. It's a tough one. You know what I would do? I, if I could go back in time to kid Jamie... Yes, I probably would invest in like Southwest Airlines or something like that. Um, and, you know, I probably would have been one of Bill Gates' first investors. You know what I would have done? I would have looked at every single relationship. I probably would have put a lot more value on every single relationship. Um, wow. Because what I have realized is that's the real meaningful thing for me through entrepreneurship and life is uh, the friends we make along the way and how we help each other. And I, I didn't always do a great job of that. So I think if I could go back in time, I would do my best to repair the situations where I could have made a bigger difference for somebody else and maybe been a little bit less selfish. Beautiful. Wow. Good. And you would, have, you would have had a lot of money from Southwest and Microsoft along the way. So that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for this, uh, Jamie. This has been really fun. And we do these short form podcasts for, for young entrepreneurs um, on a drive or at home or between going home from school or whatever it is, just to encourage them to keep going in entrepreneurship. So if you could say one last thing to all these entrepreneurs out there, uh, what do you have to say to them? I would say figure out what you're really good at and go do that. Because if you're really good at something, you're probably going to get addicted to it and be even better at it. And you'll never work a day in your life. There you go. That's perfect. Well, thank you for that. That is, that is gold for every little kid, every young entrepreneur and their families. Thank you for uh, inspiring us today. I'm excited uh, for the rest of my day. Trav, anything else you want to say before we wrap up? No, I just, just thanks, Jamie, for your time. I know you've got lots going on. And, uh, man, love reconnecting. And I, I want to catch up soon. So yeah, Great to see you guys. Yep. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much. We'll catch everybody next time. 